Hello, my name's David. In this video, we're going to have a look at creating a watercolour, or I suppose you could also call it a pastel effect. Right, we're going to make a start by heading to the Layers panel. We're going to duplicate the background layer. I'm going to use Command J, Control J. Heading up to View, down to Studio, and we're going to go to Library. Now we're going to be applying the sketch effect. Now I have done a video on this and I will put a link below in the description. If you click on it, how quick and easy was that? Yes, one pixel for the Gaussian blur is fine. So I'm going to click on apply and let's close this down. Clicking on the sketch effect or at the moment it's called pixel. I'm just going to click down to highlight it, calling it what it is, which is sketch. Always a good idea to rename the layers as you're going along. That way then you'll know exactly what's on it. Now to see through this layer to the layer underneath, we're going to change the blend mode to multiply. Coming down to the layer underneath, we're now going to head up to the tone map persona, which is this icon. When we click on it, we get the preset default. Clicking on default, we get this drop down list. It is the James Ritson Customs. This is the one I'm going to use. Scrolling through. Now there's loads of different presets here under all of the menus. Experiment. See which one works for your image. But just coming down a little bit further, the one I've selected is this one. It is running a fever. When you click on it, you can see the changes it's made. It's brightened the whole thing up. Added some nice color to it as well. I'm going to click apply so we know what's on this layer. Clicking on background, calling it what it is, which is uh, tone map. With this layer, I'm now going to head down to the icon here for live filters. I love using these because with the live filter, providing you save it in layers, you can always come back, you can change, you can adjust it. Notice the way as well, it's now been added as a child to our tone map, taking the radius up. The important part with this, just let me take it up a little bit further and I'll show you the important part, which I was just about to tell you. If you can, there, that looks really good. This is the reason as well for leaving that sketch layer on. Back to our important part, keep an eye on the edges. If I click preserve alpha, notice the way the blur now goes right to the edge. So that is important. Make sure preserve alpha is ticked. I can now click the little cross to accept it. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to click on Tone Map, so make sure this is all highlighted. We're now going to go down to Add Pixel Layer. With our Pixel Layer, make sure under the Color tab, you've got the default colors, any other color. Press D on the keyboard to restore those default colors. Heading over to the Edit menu, we're going to go down to Fill with Secondary Color. Secondary Color is black, and there it is with black back down to live filters. This time I'm going to go to procedural texture and with this from the preset, drop down, sliding down to the bottom, oils, that's the one we're after. Let's just click on the little cross. Notice I didn't change the preserve alpha, I've left it as it is, but it's gone right to the edge. Let's click on this so it's now highlighted. We're going to change the blend mode to, let's go down to color dodge, like the way this is starting to look. I just love those swirly effects we're starting to get in the colors. Right, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add a little bit of a watercolor texture. Now, what I've done is I've put a, a folder on my desktop, I've called it Textures, and to apply it, let's come up to File, let's come down to Place, or when I say apply it, I mean to actually get one of my textures. There it is there, so let's go to it. This is the one we're going to load. It's the watercolor paper texture free, and I'm gonna click open. Now using place has got a lot of advantages. For example, with it, you can just drag it out and you can fit it to the image. You don't have to come back. You don't have to use the move tool to resize it. You can pop it in like this. There, that looks really good. So we can see everything underneath. We're gonna change the blend mode again. This time we're going to go down to multiply and we're going to change the opacity. I'm going to drop it right the way down to around about the 35, 36%. Not so sure with the sketch effect. So let's go to the sketch layer. The reason why I say I'm not so sure about it is the fact that it looks almost too perfect. So heading back down to live filters. And yes, you can see I really do like using live filters. Clicking on ripple. 
Now we're not going to ripple it by that amount. I'm going to take it right the way down to there. That absolutely, oh, first, well, all right. Nearly had it until I moved it slightly. Let's zoom in. Command 1, Control 1 will do that. If I press the space bar, that gives me the hand tool. Looking around, I just want a little bit of, um, there you are, waviness. I think that looks really good like that. Let's just switch it off and you can see the difference it makes. There, that will do nicely. I am not going to tick Preserve Alpha. I'm going to leave this unchecked. If I do tick it, there you can see around the edges, these little black cut marks. That's the reason for leaving it unchecked. Click in to accept it. Right, for the next stage, bit of texture. Clicking on the top layer of our layer stack. We're gonna head back up to File. I'm gonna go down to Place. And this time I'm going to choose this one from Kiwi Hug. And I'm gonna click Open as we did before. Bringing the Place tool to the top corner. As I drag it out, notice the way that this is in the portrait mode. I'm going to come to a little grab handle, which they give you. That's quite handy. And you can see how we can now resize it to fit in with our image. Right, let's come to our blend mode. We're going to change it to multiply. Zoom in using Command 1, Control 1 to 100%. And I'm going to just drop this down into this area. Just want a little bit of texture showing. Right, just click to accept it. And I'm going to use Command-0, Control-0 to go to fit on screen. Pressing H on the keyboard as well would be a good idea to give me back the hand tool. Let's go back down to our sketch layer. I just want to remove it slightly. When I say remove it, I just want to drop down the opacity. And taking it into this sort of area here, I just want a little bit of a fine edge to it. If I come down to our tone map with this, I'm just going to drop the opacity of this down. This is going to bring through our original background layer. So you can see just a little bit more detail coming through. I'm going to take it down just a touch or two more uh, there. What have we got? We got 75%. Just click to remove the slider. Right, we've got some nice reds here. I seem to be missing out on those a little bit. Switching it off, you can see there it is. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on the mask of the procedural texture. Heading over to the toolbox, I'm going to pick up the paintbrush tool. Let's go to our brushes and with the brushes scrolling down, just making sure I have got a round soft brush, 100% opacity. If I bring it over, just making sure X is pressed, so black is now the foreground color. Yes, you can see how that's looking and that's just a little bit too fierce. So I'm going to drop the opacity down to 30% by pressing 3 on the keyboard. How quick and simple was that? Now when I bring my cursor over, you can see the way it's that, that looks better. I'm just going to paint in the red on those flags there just to make that stand out. Right, finishing off with a quick border, let's click on our top layer. We're going to put in a new empty layer on top, so clicking on Add Pixel Layer. Coming over to the toolbox, pressing X on the keyboard to put white as our foreground color. 30% opacity, I'm going to take this to 60 by pressing 6 on the keyboard, bringing the brush down, reducing it in size, left hand square bracket, taking it to this area here, I'm going to click down, pressing shift on the keyboard, coming over to the other side, holding down shift on the keyboard as well, let's click down there, and when I release shift, cross it shoots, coming down to the bottom corner, clicking down, pressing shift on the keyboard, and down that shoots. Coming across to the other side, pressing shift on the keyboard, clicking down, cross that shoot, coming back up, taking it over the edge a little bit more, clicking down and across that shoot. Let's repeat that again, just into this area here. And when you repeat it, you can see you get the lines coming through. And if I just come here, just clicking down, releasing it, that's the sort of effect I'm after. It's just a very quick and simple way to produce a border to finish your image off there. That will do nicely. There it is. There is our finished image. Don't forget, save it in layers. Everything is going to be completely adjustable when you do that. You can come back, you can change, you can adjust the procedural texture should you want to. You can even try another one. Fur could be good with some images, so give that one a try as well. Watercolour, texture, yes, don't forget you can change the opacity on that. Even that there looks 
pretty good. You might want to go with that entirely up to you, but just give it a try. See what you come up with. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Give it a thumbs up if you have. Don't forget to subscribe. Plenty more videos to come. If you click that little bell icon, you'll receive a notification every time a new video is posted. But until the next time, it is happy imaging and take care.